invite our graduates to come forward. Graduate us or friends. And the other so many can be here. And their parents, did they come up? Yeah, we've got we've got parents in the room. Um, I know we do we have Regiers this morning. And just to make this complicated, I'm the R, either for Reverend or Rodney or I don't know. And, and you are the P, not for Pastor. Right? Right? Did I get that yes, right? Yes, you did. Okay. Dearly brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, whose faith and lives have been nurtured in this congregation. That's right. Uh, have, you've reached an important and significant milestone in your life. That you graduate from high school and college and into the future, we want you to know that you're loved and by, by your church family. That you uh, begin your studies, we look to the Word of God for strength, encouragement, and guidance. The Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing you by one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And this is where we do your responses. Commit your way to the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord God is there. He is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your only Son to die on the cross that we may have life abundant. We thank you for bringing these students to this point of their formal education. For all the efforts of parents and teachers throughout these years, we praise you. We ask for wisdom and guidance for them as they make decisions about their life that will have implication for years to come. Guide them in making decisions about vocation and family. Give them a rich measure of your spirit as fields of study and opportunity for employment and coming Help them accurately assess the gifts and abilities you have given and bless the choices that they make. Let your word dwell richly in them as you nurture the faith given to them in baptism and strengthened by your holy Son. Let what has been learned by be employed in mature Christian service and read on wisdom to discern what is false and to hold on to what is true. May they ever grow closer to you in faith and with their life honor the name of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Go in peace and joy. The Almighty God, the Most Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and bless and strengthen you for your faithful service in this day.
So first, before we, I say any more, I want to continue to thank our quilting ladies for providing these beautiful quilts. Now, I have been told that this quilt was made specifically for Jordan. So know that this quilt's been already prayed over by those ladies. So just let's give a little recognition to those who are involved in our quilt world. So would you all please stand up? Even if you didn't piece this particular quilt, we'd like to know who you are. So thank you ladies for your continued um, commitment to the quilts. We love them very much. So some of us are standing up here for the first time. Although she's seen it done four other times before her. <laughs> And some of us are standing over here at the same time. So though she holds no quilt, she does have one. Yeah, she's been given a quilt. So um, some of you I've kind of heard, have heard me say this to some degree before. You know, my mom found great peace in piecing quilts through the years. She lose herself in the whole process. Um, it had brought her great joy to piece the beautiful quilts and to give those to people she cared about. From the planning through the finished product, she just, she loved them all. It drove me absolutely nuts because it was all loose all over the kitchen because that's the only place she had to work. But um, she made it work for her. Um, but that wasn't the case with me. Um, I was willing to cut squares and pieces as long as she needed that to be done. But I really never had an interest in sewing those pieces together. Now, don't get me wrong, I could sew and I could sew, but it really wasn't something I wanted to fill my time with. But now I get it. Um, with the uncertainty and change over the past two years, I have begun my own quilting journey, and I've come to love the process, and my perspective has really changed. So when I process a quilt, and I think about the plan and what goes into it, um, I, I've started to follow some quilters online, of course, and I've come to realize how the pieces of our lives are stitched together, like pieces of the quilt. The quilt tells a story, it tells your story. Pieces of our past experiences are stitched together by the people who have been part of those memories. The batting in the center of the quilt, which brings the warmth, is the blessings we have experienced and the ones we have shared with others. On the back of the quilt, the solid piece, the backing, protects the intricate piecing and stitches of the quilt top. And then finally, the binding and the quilting, or the tying, in this case, um, is vital to the survival of the quilt, for without that part of the process, the quilt would not hold together. These stitches and the binding are God's word, and are God and his word, and they are the anchor that hold and make it strong and resilient for years to come. The stitches in your story represent God, his power and influence, guidance and counsel in your lives and his word that guides and directs you. These final steps are necessary for the quilt to survive, just as God's love and protection are vital for you to not only survive, but to thrive. So, your story, beginning at birth and baptism and on through today, has been written and guided by the Spirit. Along with the gifts and talents given to you, your story is unique to you and has been since the beginning of time. As you close this chapter of your story, hold on to those memories, but look forward to the new chapter opening before you. He's prepared work for you to do. And equipped you to do whatever he places before you. Continue to look to him, trust him fully, believe what he says about you, and find your strength in his promises. Pursue his purpose, remembering who you are and whose you are, as you continue to live your story. Cake afterwards. That's why Pastor Reese is here for the cake. 
Just really tell us what you're going to do. I am going to work at Sunset Elementary here in town. I'm going to be the third and fourth special education teacher. Yay. She's staying with us? Awesome. Jordan, not so much. <laughs> I will be attending Foley Community College for veterinary nursing. Two year program and I'm going to my field. Are we excited? Can't yeah. wait to see what they do. They're going to go do great. I know for sure. All right. Got to speak to you all. All right. And there will be cake and yeah, something afterwards. Right. So you just said cake fast. I wanted to make sure. Because cake's important. That's the important part. Yeah. We sing our own. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. 
as a call to have ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shout for joy to God all the earth, hallelujah. Sing the glory of his name, give to him glorious praise, hallelujah. Praise to God, all awesome are your deeds, so great is your power, and your name is unending. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds for the children of man. Bless our God. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So shout for joy to God, all the earth, hallelujah, sing the glory of his name, giving to him glorious praise. Amen. says my soul. 
Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid upon him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may be yet hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with incense. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will also have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Peace and attention to his people. Hallelujah. Those who do not necessarily crash and suffer these things and enter into his glory. Hallelujah. Our epistle lesson for 1 John chapter 3. See the kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know it is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will we be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the hour of the Yeah, 
series, but this is the one I'm going to preach because uh, if I try to preach without a sermon in front of me, we might be here until the paint goes bad, so it's going to be John 10, that same chapter earlier, chapter 10, verse 22, at the time of the Feast of Dedication, 
It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to them, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my Father's hand. My Father who has given to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I am the Father. Now I do know that the last time I preached that text was in 2004 from this very old uh, which was interesting. And I did consider just reusing it. You know, uh, trusting in your lack of memory. But then I said, if I really thought it was unmemorable, why would I have reached it to start with? So, anyway, I think the last time I was here was 2013, maybe, somewhere around in there, so it's been quite a while. There's a story about a little boy who was rushed up to his mom and said, Look at me, mommy. I am as big as the lion. I am nine feet high. What makes you were, think you're nine feet high? Asked the mom. Well, I made a ruler for myself and my, measured myself, and it says I am nine feet high. Well, by that measure, I am six two and 170 pounds, and I'll see if that flies with my doctor when I go in for my next physical. I doubt it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees in Jesus' day had the same problem with Jesus. He didn't fit the measurement they had in mind for their Messiah. They wanted him to tell them plainly. And Jesus said, I've already told you plainly. And I've shown you plainly. They had waxen ears, they couldn't hear, at least that's what my grandmother used to say. They couldn't hear his words because his words didn't match their measure of what the Messiah should be. The same could be said of the world in which we live in today. It seems we are all preoccupied with how the world fails to hear and obey God's law. And it is true that the world fails to hear and obey God's law. But what is really tragic is that the world fails to hear the gospel. We are rapidly becoming a nation where, when asked, participants in survey check none when it comes to their spiritual practice. And if we think we are better because we chose the right answer on the multiple choice question, we have another thought coming. We too, at times, fail to hear God's voice as he speaks to us. We too have wax in our ears. We fail to hear clearly. God's law and God's gospel. Jesus said that his sheep hear his voice when he calls. Or do we always? Or do we prefer to speak or hear words we should never speak or hear aloud in church? When our mothers on this day on which we honor them say that we always honor our mothers as we should. Do we hear our brothers and sisters crying out with their human need? 
Why are we so distracted by the way of the world that if our mothers knew what we were thinking, we would not only get our ears played out, but our mouths washed with soap too? Do our wants become more important than the needs of our neighbor? Do we hear God calling us to repentance? Jesus, sheep, hear his voice. They come when he calls. He even knows their name. Notice that Jesus didn't say, Some of my sheep hear my voice and come. Or that some of the sheep know his voice when he calls. Think about the flock Jesus was speaking to. We know the disciples were there, and we know that they were not always obedient. All of them showed their failings on the week of Jesus' death and resurrection. And Jesus knew that. Yet, he also knew them by their names. Jesus knows you by your name. He claimed you as his child in the waters of your baptism. He came into this world to not only tell us how to live an abundant life, but show us what an abundant life looks like. He knew how far we fall short of keeping his will, and so he died on the cross that all of our sins would be forgiven. And in this season of Easter, we celebrate that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus told the leaders of the church that no one was going to snatch even one of the sheep. Paul used almost those exact same words in my favorite passage from Romans. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he also not graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. As it is written for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. In all these things, we are more than conquerors than him who loves us. For I am sure neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever separate us from the love of God. And because of this, Jesus can say with all confidence, my Father who has given to me them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them from my Father's hands. 
That's a promise we all hear, even if our ears are filled with the quacks. That is the message the world, who now would check none of the above, need to hear more than ever. I now have the privilege of working with the age group with the highest number of those choosing none of the above. I'm the new executive director of Fairmont Coffee and Ministry. Now this is not a group of young people who reject the gospel. Actually, many of them have never heard the gospel. What they know about church is that churches fight with one another, churches condemn everyone, The point of our ministry at Fairmont is to provide a safe place for young people to share their faith with one another, to hear the gospel. And I get the privilege of seeing that and hearing that every day. We have remarkable young people. You have remarkable young people that have graduated and are graduating from Zion. And mothers, hear these words. Nothing is ever going to snatch them from God's hand, even when you're not able to watch over them as you have perhaps in the past. I look forward to working with some of you at the fireworks tent this summer. I said this is the only time I get to see you is in July. Um, I would invite you, uh, if you have a chance, and if you haven't, to stop by Fairmont for a cup of coffee. If you don't like coffee, we have tea and smoothies and all other kinds of things. We have a great lunch menu, and our baked goods are really, really good. The first day I went to work there, they made cinnamon rolls. And I couldn't help but smell them. And I said, I really, really hope those were horrible. They weren't. So I bought one for there and two to take home. So come by. And maybe you can do some eavesdropping with me see the mark of these young people uh, who uh, amaze me every day. Yeah. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding in your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We rise for prayer. How awesome are your works, O Lord, chiefly the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Show the light of your honor and great power to those in heirs darkness, that by the Holy Spirit's work they would submit themselves to Christ's gracious redemption, glory and mercy. Preserve your church, O Lord, from every sorrow and mockery of the enemy. In this little while between Christ's resurrection and our own, do not let the threats of persecution, loss, or discomfort turn us from the joy and confidence of his redemption. Sustain all creatures faithful to their calling, all confessors steadfast in their trials, and all Christians firm in the faith, the life, or in the mercy. O Lord, you have provided us with the gift of family, plus those who have shown us a mother's love and nurtured us during our childhood. Bless and protect all mothers with child and all those who have suffered miscarriages for the death of a child, and all those who have yearned for a child and lived with the pain of that unfulfilled longing for it in your mercy. Amen. O oh Lord, it is your will that every human 
institution exercised the authority of good men above to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. Give us good government under which we may honor everyone, love the brotherhood, and fear God. Above all, let our, suff our subjection be offered always for your sake as sojourners and exiles in this world. And if we must endure suffering, let it be mindful of you, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have not forgotten us in our affliction or abandoned us in our weakness. Deliver the sick and the suffering according to your will, and give your comfort to the dying, especially to those who requested our prayers. Judy Anglin, Steve Holthouse, and Tina Shed. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the day of our trouble as we await your perfect healing, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Give us joy in the midst of sorrow here at the sacrament of the altar. Give repentance, a firm faith, and a united confession that we may have honest fellowship in the blessing of Christ's testament. With consciousness, thus cleansed from the evil and renewed in you, abide in us to stand ungodly until the day of visitation, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, of our of your Father goodness, you allow your children to come under you, chastising rod to confirm us in your only begotten Son, here to suffer death on earth and afterwards, here and hereafter in glory. Comfort us in your Holy Spirit in all temptations and afflictions that we may not despair, but trust continually in your Son's promise that your trials will ensure but a little while and then follow by eternal joy. Grant that we would overcome all evil in patient hope and at last obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may Rise for the sacrament of communion. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to Christ. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times 
that all Christ is good thanks to you, O Lord, with the Father, Almighty and everlasting God, and for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him to death that we might die. That, that we might not die in eternity. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns for all eternity, all who believe in him will both transcend and death and will rise again to a new life. Therefore, angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, rely and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and sing. Shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Christ for the birth of this.
guests and visitors for worshiping with us today. And if you have not already done so, we would ask that everyone please sign your name on the attendance sheet, which is found in the burgundy folder at the end of each pew. Please tear out the sheet and place it on top of the folder to make it easier for the ushers to get that in mind. Your May newsletter are in your mailboxes for you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. 